Matthew chapter 6. Moreover, beholding your mind on the matter of not practicing your correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting before men, in order to be attentively viewed by them as a spectacular performer. Otherwise, a reward you do not have in the presence of your Father in heaven. Therefore, whenever you are practicing the virtues of mercy or beneficence, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the actors on the stage of life do, in the synagogues and in the streets, in order that they may be held in honor by men. Assuredly, I am saying to you, they have their reward and the receipt for the same in full. But while you are practicing the virtues of mercy or beneficence, do not allow your left hand to know what your right hand is doing, in order that your mercy or beneficence may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you are praying, you shall not be as the actors on the stage of life, because they are fond of praying in the synagogues and while standing on the corners of avenues, in order that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I am saying to you, they have their reward and the receipt for the same in full. But as for you, whenever you are praying, enter into your secret and well-guarded place, and having closed your door, pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Moreover, when praying, do not repeat the same thing over and over as the pagans do, for they think that they will be heard because of their multiplicity of words. Therefore, do, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask for them. Therefore, as for you, in this manner be praying, Our Father, who is in heaven, let your name be venerated. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Our bread, that for the coming day, give us today. And forgive us the moral obligations we owe, even as also, as for us, we have forgiven those morally obligated to us. And do not lead us into the place of testing, where a solicitation to do evil would tempt us to sin, but deliver us from the pernicious one. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you are fasting, stop being like the actors on the stage of life, of a sad and gloomy countenance, for they mask their faces, in order that they may appear to men as those who are fasting. Assuredly, I am saying to you, they have their reward and the receipt for the same in full. But as for you, when fasting, massage your head with olive oil, and wash your face, in order that you may not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who observes in the sphere of the secret, and your Father who observes in the sphere of the secret will reward you. Stop accumulated treasures upon the earth for yourselves, where the clothes moth and corrosion destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But be accumulating treasures in heaven, where neither a clothes moth nor corrosion destroys, and where thieves do not break in nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will also be your heart. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be in single focus, pure, sound, your whole body will be well lighted. But if your eye be diseased, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light which is in you is darkness, the darkness how great. No one is able to be habitually serving two masters, for either he will hate the one and the other one of a different kind he will love, or one he will hold too firmly as against the other, and the other one of a different kind he will disdain. You are not able to be rendering a slave's obedience to God and to a passion for accumulating wealth. On this account, I am saying to you, stop worrying about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, and about your body, with what you shall clothe yourself. Is not the life more than food and the body more than clothing? Consider the birds of the heaven. They are not sowing seed nor reaping, nor even are they collecting into granaries, and yet your heavenly Father is feeding them. As for you, do you not surpass them? Moreover, who is there of you who by worrying is able to put to his stature eighteen inches? And concerning clothing, why are you worrying? Consider well the lilies of the field, and learn thoroughly in what way they grow. They are not laboring to the point of exhaustion, nor even are they spinning. But I am saying to you, not even Solomon in all of his clothed, oops, clothed glory, <laughs> or clothed glory, that's probably better than the other.
But I am saying to you, not even Solomon in all of his glory clothed himself as one of these. And in view of the fact that the herbage of the field, which is in existence today and tomorrow is thrown into a furnace, God thus clothes, will he not the sooner clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, stop worrying, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with what shall we clothe ourselves? For all these things the pagan Gentiles are diligently seeking. For your heavenly Father knows that you are in constant need of all these things. But be seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness, and these things, all of them, shall be added to you. Therefore, do not begin to worry about tomorrow, for the next day will take care of its own interests." Sufficient to the day is its trouble. Stop pronouncing censorious criticism in order that you may not be the object of censorious criticism. For with that judgment by which you are judging, you will be judged. And with that standard of judgment with which you are judging, by that standard will judgment be passed on you. And why do you contemplate the splinter of wood in the eye of your brother and do not put your mind upon the log in your own eye? Or how is it that you will say to your brother, Permit me to draw out the splinter from your eye, and behold, the log is in your eye. O actor on the stage of life, draw out first from your eye the log, and then you will see clearly to draw out the splinter from the eye of your brother. Do not give that which is holy to the dogs, neither throw your pearls before the hogs, lest perchance they trample them under their feet, and having turned, lacerate you. Keep on asking for something to be given, and it shall be given you. Keep on seeking, and you shall find. Keep on reverently knocking, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who keeps on asking for something to be given keeps on receiving. And he who keeps on seeking keeps on finding. And to him who keeps on reverently knocking, it shall be opened. Or who is there of you, a man who, should his son ask for a loaf of bread, he will not give him a stone, will he? Or should he also ask for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? Therefore, as for you, in view of the fact that though being those who are evil, actively opposed to that which is good, you know how to be constantly giving good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him for them? Therefore, all things whatever you may be desiring men to be doing to you, in the same manner also, as for you, you be doing to them, for this is the law and the prophets." Enter through the narrow gate, because broad is the gate, and spacious is the road, the one that leads away to ruin and everlasting misery. And many there are who are constantly entering through it. Because narrow is the gate, and compressed is the road, the one which leads away into the life, and few there are who are finding it. Constantly be guarding yourself against the false prophets, men who are of such a character as to be coming to you with sheep-like outward expressions, but in their inner being they are rapacious wolves. By their fruits you will clearly recognize them. They do not gather up grapes from bramble bushes or figs from a prickly wild plant, the thistle, do they? In the same manner, every intrinsically good tree produces beautiful fruits but a rotten tree produces fruits which are rotten to the core. An intrinsically good tree is not able to produce rotten fruits, neither is a rotten tree able to produce beautiful fruit. Every tree which is not producing beautiful fruit is customarily cut out and is thrown into the fire. So then, by their fruits you will clearly recognize them. Not everyone who keeps on saying to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who keeps on doing that which my Father who is in heaven has determined shall be done. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not in your name prophesy, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles which demonstrated the power of God? And then I will declare in a public announcement to them, I never came to know you experientially. Be going away from me, you who are working the lawlessness. Therefore, everyone who is of such a character as to be habitually hearing these words of mine and habitually doing them shall be likened to an intelligent man who is of such a nature that he built his house upon the rocky cliff. And the violent rainstorm came down, and the torrents came, and the wind blew and rushed upon and beat against that house, and it did not fall for it had been built upon the rocky cliff as its foundation and was firmly established upon it. 
And everyone who is hearing these words of mine and is not habitually doing them shall be likened to an imprudent man without forethought or wisdom who was of such a character that he built his house upon the sandy ground. And the violent rainstorm came down and the torrents came and the wind blew and rushed upon and beat against that house and it fell and its downfall was great. And it came to pass when Jesus brought these words to a close, the crowds were struck with astonishment to the point of the loss of self-control by his teaching. For he was teaching them in a manner of one who possesses authority and not in the manner of their men learned in the sacred writings. And having come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper, having come, fell upon his knees and touched the ground with his forehead in an expression of profound reverence before him, saying, Master, in the event that you may be having a heartfelt desire, you are able to cleanse me. And having stretched out his hand, he touched him, saying, I am desiring it from all my heart. Be cleansed at once. And immediately his leprosy was cured by being cleansed away. And Jesus says to him, see to it, do not tell even one person, but be going away. Show yourself at once as evidence to the priest and offer the gift which Moses enjoined as a testimony to them. And having entered Capernaum, there came to him the commander of a hundred soldiers, pleading with him and saying, Sir, my servant is bedridden at my home, a paralytic being constantly tormented terribly. He says to him, I, having come, will heal him. But the commander of a hundred soldiers answered, saying, Sir, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, yet having under myself soldiers. And I say to this one, be proceeding, and he proceeds. And to another, be coming, and he comes. And to my slave, do this at once, and he does it. Now, Jesus, having heard, marveled and said to those who were following with him, Assuredly, I am saying to you, in the case of not even one person did I find such great faith in Israel. Moreover, I am saying to you, many from the east and from the west shall come and recline at the banqueting table with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom shall be thrown into darkness, that darkness which is outside of the king's banqueting house. There, in that place, there shall be audible weeping and lamentation and the gnashing of the teeth. And Jesus said to the commander of a hundred soldiers, Be going on your way. In the manner in which you believed, let it become to you. And the servant was healed in that hour. And having come into Peter's home, Jesus saw Peter's mother-in-law bedridden and burning with a fever. And he touched her hand and the fever left her. And she arose and went to serving him a meal. Now evening having come, they brought to him many who were possessed with demons. And he ejected the spirits by a word. And all those who were ill he healed. In order that there might be fulfilled that which was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took away our infirmities and carried off our diseases. Now Jesus, having seen a crowd around him, gave orders to go off to the other side. And having approached, one of those men learned in the sacred scriptures said to him, Teacher, I will follow with you as a disciple wherever you may be departing. And Jesus says to him, The foxes always have burrows, and the birds of the heaven always have roosting places, but the Son of Man does not have where to recline his head. And another of his pupils said to him, Master, permit me first to go off and bury my father. But Jesus says to him, Start following with me as my disciple and continue to do so as a habit of life and allow the dead to bury their own dead. And after he had gone on board the boat, his disciples accompanied him. And behold, a great storm arose in the sea, an earthquake of the sea. Its waters stirred to their depths so that the boat was so covered with the waves that it was hidden. But he himself was sleeping. And having come to him, they aroused him from his sleep, saying, Lord, save us at once, we are perishing. And he says to them, Why are you such timid ones, men of little faith? Then, having arisen, he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there came a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of exotic man is this, that even the winds and the sea are obedient to him? And when he had come to the other side, into the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce and savage, so that a person is not strong enough and thus able to pass by along that road. And behold, they called aloud, saying, 
What bond of fellowship is there between us and you, O Son of God? Did you come to this place to torment us before the appointed time? Now there was at a distance from them a herd of many hogs feeding. And the demons went to begging him, saying, Since you are ejecting us, send us off into the herd of hogs. And he said to them, Be gone, and keep on going. And they, having come out, went off into the hogs. And behold, the entire herd started forward impetuously down the precipice into the sea. And they died in the waters. And those grazing them fled. And having gone into the city, they reported all things, and the things concerning those possessed with demons. And behold, the entire city went out to meet Jesus, and having seen him, they begged him to get out of their boundaries. And having gone on board the boat, he crossed over and entered his own city. And behold, they were bringing to him a paralytic lying prostrate on the couch. And having seen their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Courage, child, and continue to be courageous. Your sins are being forgiven. And behold, certain of those men learned in the sacred scriptures said to themselves, This fellow is guilty of impious and reproachful speech, injurious to the divine majesty of deity. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why are you thinking pernicious things in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, Your sins are being forgiven, or to say, Be arising and start walking and keep on walking? But in order that you may know that the Son of Man possesses authority on the earth to be forgiving sins, then he says to the paralytic, Be arising. Pick up and carry away your couch and be going off into your home. And having arisen, he went off to his home. And the crowds, having seen, became afraid and glorified God, who gave authority such as this to men. And passing along from there, Jesus saw a man seated at his desk in the customs office, a collector of export and import duties called Matthew. And he says to him, Start following with me as my disciple, and consider it a permanent appointment. And having arisen, he followed with him as his disciple. And it came to pass that he was reclining at the dinner table in the house. And behold, many tax collectors and other sinners, stained with certain vices or crimes having come, were feasting together with Jesus and his disciples. And having seen this, the Pharisees were saying to his disciples, for what reason with the tax collectors and men stained with such vices and crimes is your teacher eating? And having heard this, he said, No need do those have who are in sound health of a doctor, but those who are ill. Having gone on your way, learn what is meant, mercy I am desiring, and not sacrifice offered on an altar. For I did not come to call men righteous in character, but those who are sinners by nature. Then there come to him the disciples of John, saying, As for us, what is the reason why we and the Pharisees are observing fasts, but your disciples are not doing so? And Jesus said to them, The sons of the nuptials, companions of the bridegroom, are not able to be mourning while the bridegroom is with them, are they? But days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast. Moreover, no one puts a patch made of cloth which has not been pre-treated upon a worn-out garment. For the patch which fills it tears away from the garment, and the rent becomes worse. Neither do they put just-made wine into worn-out wineskins. Otherwise, the wineskins burst, and the wine is poured out, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put just-made wine into wineskins new in quality, and both are preserved from perishing. While he was saying these things to them, Behold, there came one, a ruler, and fell upon his knees and touched the ground with his forehead in an expression of profound reverence before him, saying, My daughter just now died, but having come, lay your hand upon her, and she shall live. And having arisen, Jesus followed with him also his disciples. And behold, a woman suffering with the flow of blood twelve years, having come behind him, touched the fringe of his outer garment. For she was saying within herself, If only I touch his garment, I shall be made whole. And Jesus, having turned around and having seen her, said, Cheerful courage, daughter, be having it constantly. Your faith has saved you, and the cure is permanent. No relapse into your former condition. And the woman was restored to health from that hour. And Jesus, having come into the house of the ruler, and having seen the flute players and the crowd wailing tumultuously, kept on saying, Be clearing out of here so as to make room, for the little girl did not die but is sleeping. 
and they looked down their noses at him and went to laughing. But when the crowd was put out, having entered, he grasped her hand firmly, and the little girl was raised up, and this report went out throughout that land. And as Jesus was passing by from there, two blind men followed with him, shouting out and saying, Sympathize with our misery and help us, son of David. And after he had gone into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus says to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Master. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it become to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly charged them with earnest admonition, saying, Be seeing to it, let no one be knowing this. But they, having gone out, blazed abroad his fame throughout the whole of that land. And as they were going out, behold, they brought to him one who was dumb, being possessed by a demon. And the demon, having been ejected, the dumb man broke his silence and spoke. And the crowds marveled, saying, Never yet was it thus seen in Israel. But the Pharisees were saying, By the ruler of the demons he is ejecting the demons. And Jesus was going about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, and making a public proclamation of the good news concerning the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness. And having seen the crowds, he was moved with compassion concerning them, because they were exhausted by their troubles and their long aimless wanderings, and had thrown themselves to the ground in an utterly prostrate condition as sheep, not having a shepherd. Then he says to his disciples, The harvest indeed is great, but the workers few. Therefore beseech the Lord of the harvest to thrust out workers into his harvest. And having called to himself his twelve disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to be ejecting them, and to be healing every disease and every sickness. Now these are the names of the twelve who were sent off as ambassadors with credentials to fulfill a certain mission. First Simon, the one called Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas the Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent off on a mission, having given them a charge, saying, Into the road of the Gentiles do not go forth, and into a city of the Samaritans do not go. But be going on your way, rather, to the sheep of the house of Israel, sheep who have been neglected and have lost their way, and are now wandering about without guidance. Moreover, as you go, make a public proclamation with such formality, gravity, and authority as must be listened to and obeyed, saying, The kingdom of heaven has come near and is imminent. Be healing those who are sick, be raising the dead, lepers be cleansing, demons be ejecting. In a gratuitous manner you received, in a gratuitous manner give. Do not begin to acquire for yourselves gold, nor even silver, nor even brass for your money belt, nor even a beggar's collecting bag for the road, nor even two undergarments, nor even sandals, nor even a walking stick, for the workman is worthy of his sustenance. And in whatever city or village you enter, inquire carefully who in it is suitable, and there stay as a guest until whatever time you may depart. And while entering the house, pay it your due respects. But if the house is suitable, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not suitable, let your peace turn back to you. And whoever does not receive you or heed your words, while going forth out of that house or city, shake out the dust of your feet considering them as heathen whose dust would defile you. Assuredly, I am saying to you, it will be more endurable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, it is I who am sending you on a mission as sheep in the midst of wolves. Consequently, become those who are wary as snakes and guileless as doves. Moreover, be constantly on your guard against the aforementioned men, for they shall deliver you over into the power of judicial tribunals. And in their synagogue courts of justice they shall scourge you. And before governors and even before kings you shall be brought on account of me, resulting in a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. However, whenever they deliver you up, do not begin to be concerned about the manner in which or what you will speak. For it shall be given you in that hour what you shall say. For as for you, you are not the ones who are speaking, but the spirit of your father who is speaking in you. Moreover, a brother shall deliver a brother up to death, and a father a child. 
and children shall rise up against parents for their own advantage and put them to death. And you shall be hated by all on account of my name. But he who has persevered to the end, this one shall be kept safe and sound and rescued from danger and destruction. Moreover, whenever they are persecuting you in this city, be fleeing to one of a different character. For assuredly, I am saying to you, you positively will not finish the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. A pupil is not above the teacher, nor even a slave above his master. It is sufficient for the pupil to be exactly like his teacher, and the slave exactly like his master. Since they surnamed the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those under the control of the master of the house. Do not begin to fear them, for there is not even one thing that has been covered up which shall not be uncovered, and secret which shall not be made known. That which I am speaking to you in the privacy of darkness, speak in the light of a public disclosure, and that which you are hearing in the ear, publicly proclaim on the housetops. And stop fearing those who kill the body, but do not have the power to kill the soul, but rather be fearing him who has power to bring both soul and body to the condition of utter ruin and everlasting misery in hell. Are not two little sparrows sold for a penny? Yet one of them shall not fall upon the ground without the will or the intervention of your father. Moreover, also your hairs, the ones of your head, all of them have been counted and the result tabulated. Therefore, stop fearing. As for you, you are of more importance than many sparrows.